see, this is for the peace song. And that's happy to tell them your success since of March. And the fact that you are allowed to see another day celebrated means that God has given you another day. And of course, we're happy for ourselves and for Ghana as a whole. I pray that today will bring the blessings of God upon our lives and that we will keep shining as Ghana. Mm. Good morning, guys. Good morning, morning, morning. morning, morning. It's Ghana is 61. And uh, yes. I'm sure Dr. Kwame Nkrumah would have mixed feelings at this point. Mm. Yeah. Um, about what? Yes, about a lot of things. I mean, about, if you have children who are just stubborn, you just ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, can't, you can't simply oh, ignore no, you them. You ignore but, but if you're passionate about them, you want to change them and see something happen. Yes, but one way, way to change them people. is to ignore them. When they see really? that you're no more minding them, mm. They will come back to their sense and say, Charlie, we've done something mm. wrong. That's why they won't matter. It works. Actually, it works. Because actually, when you ignore them, then mm. they're like, okay, nobody's saying anything. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> oh, Charlie, if you, they ignore you and Charlie, the morning king is not coming. You, 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 you <laughs> learn first. Yeah. But, but, but tell me, guys, I mean, 61 years we've been marching yeah. the independence. What's the essence? Uh, in We're our still present day. Like, we can write a thesis on that. that no, I want to know. I mean, <laughs> maybe I'm ignorant. You are not ignorant. You're, you're just being out. I want to know. Do you know those you? out there watching us from home um do you know why we still match with John, school children out there johnny the, the point sun? the point is that we should refine do you, we should refine we well, should. how do you mean we should um find another way of uh, marking the day instead of getting our kids to match in the past it was it was fun to to go out there and match um because at that time uh in fact, freedom meant marching and, and letting the, the, the society, the world see that there is that freedom. In fact, it was not easy to get black uh, kids to be out there on the street doing all those things. Mm. So it was a symbol of what we now enjoy, mm. okay? But today, I, I, I don't know about that. It's symbolic. not being easy because I remember when I was younger. It was you were waiting for Sith March. You were waiting for your black Sith March. Yes, you were. Yes. You, 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 yes. you, you, you see, it was about the it was March. Wasn't, no, for Thursday. us, it was about you. you know when okay. you you were in primary school, you don't really get. Okay, you don't really get the opportunity to. That's the GSS. Yeah. So everybody sees you and they are they are waving. It's it's okay. But you see, the the essence. I mean, I had the same feelings back at GSS. But when I got to secondary school, I realized that well, there were other things that were being used to commemorate independence. Yeah. Mm. Okay. For example, the national right. debate competitions. Yeah. Right. They were the head of state awards. Mm. There were other things that were being done. Okay, so how do we introduce those at the lower level to also understand that? Because when I got to secondary school, the interest to go and match was reduced because yeah. I knew that there were other, other avenues. Things. There no, are plays at the National Theatre, mm. you know, other things. Mm. Can we introduce the same things for the people at the basic school right. so they get interested? And this whole essence of putting people... You see, my problem, last each year, we have the children collapse. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Definitely. Or, yes, they, yeah, they, it's they faint. It's a massive, it doesn't faint. happen. <laughs> Independence. Even yeah. some men in uniform <laughs> faint. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. quite... Okay, now look active. at the money we would use to try and resuscitate them mm. Or whatever it is, mm. marching at this point. Mm. I, let's look they, at, let's do medical screening before that. No, happens. but they no. see, let's look at the root cause or why the colonial masters had us do that. Right. No, no, Johnny, it was not. It was not our masters. Mm. You see, uh, it was just see, symbolic. at that point, mm. right? Okay, be, before before six March, mm. there was what they called the Empire Day. Yeah. Right. So the Ghana Empire. So everybody in the Ghana Empire converged at one point, and, and they did what we are doing yeah. now. Right. So when we gained independence, we drew from it the Empire Day. Mm. I am saying that sixty-one mm. years after we have marched, ah, <laughs> should we stop? Yes. And, uh, you, uh, you see, and that's but exactly mm. the point I am making. Mm. I think that you see. We had won that freedom. Mm. People were excited. Right. They wanted to see that excitement in, in our kids yeah. displaying right. that they can do what the, the white Was man doing. could do. Mm. 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 Our leaders wanted to be at the forefront to be, to be seen as, yes, these are the people mm. who brought independence. We are free. We is, can is that our way of managing money. our own Excellent. Mm. Beginning. Well, it's Excellent. Just a symbolic but 60 way. years old. <laughs> I am thinking that. Let yes. us review it. Let us right. find yeah. another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it can still be, 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 be maintained, but mm. then we should also focus on some other things that mm. would help the children mm. to learn, yeah. like an everyday thing, not just a right. Sith March thing. And, and you know, you know and that you know that mm. the the um, the hours 
that used to be invested in it mm. have reduced. Yes. The activities are reduced. Back in the day, we because used to have of the, certain. The, uh, I, I mean, I, I yeah. was I was a, a, a gymnastic, you know, person for the June four celebrations, which mm. was also a big national event. Like right. that. Right. Let's let's try. And see you, if we you see, be, be, because you people know what, were if we, we, we could go on and on yes. about this, it's, but it's, we have more important <laughs> talk after the news was <laughs> solid here. <laughs> yes, definitely. It's now time for morning news on New Day. Good morning and happy Independence Day. Morning news now. Let's go to our first story. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, has announced a 17.5% reduction in electricity tariffs for residential consumers effective March 15, 2018. The Commission has also announced a 30% reduction for non-residential consumers. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission reviewed the tariffs after consulting with the various service providers. The adjustment include a 25% reduction for special load tariff consumers and 10% reduction for mines. The move is in accordance with the PURC Act 1997, Act 538. There is also a policy shift from government point of view that in terms of the plans, they are making a, poli a deliberate policy shift to use natural gas in most of the plants. And this, even initially, the projections that the, the, the distributors used in coming out with their cost was 8.8424 uh, USD per M MBTU. And the real figures we got from the ministries that is included in the tariff is now 7.29 USD per MMBTU. So the new tariff structure is expected to remain the same until 2019, when it will next be reviewed. According to the PURC, the tariff reduction did not have to wait for the concession of ECG to take effect. It might not affect it that much because this time we have stated clear in the press statement that the AAF is going to be used periodically. The automatic adjustment formula is going to be used periodically, and that will be adjusting for inflation, that will be adjusting for foreign exchange losses. So whatever comes in will not be felt that much with Ghanaians. The Commission did not, however, review tariffs on water. The announcement comes barely a month after utility service providers, Ghana Water Company Limited and Electricity Company of Ghana, demanded a 200% increase in tariffs. The 2018 budget presented by the finance minister, Ken Ufuriata, in November 2017, had projected a 13% reduction for residential and non-residential consumers. This reduction, however, exceeds the projected one. All right, now let's do some agricultural business. And the Minister for Food and Agriculture has rubbished claims by the General Agricultural Workers Union and the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, doubting the number of jobs created by government's planting for food and jobs program. The two farmer groups earlier cast doubt on government's claim it had created 745,000 jobs through the program. But speaking to TV3, Dr. Wusue Friyakoto challenged the farmer groups to present evidence that suggests his figures have been exaggerated. The basis. They say uh, they've spoken. Have they, they've spoken to? I mean, they've spoken to their farmers on the field. Which, and who are their farmers? You know, you see, you don't take these things. Who are their farmers? There are five million farm families in Ghana. We have chosen two hundred thousand to work with initially. How many of those two hundred have they gone to? To 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 ask. Well, they say they want you to bring them facts. I mean, they I want to bring to them facts. Yeah. They should be bringing me the facts that my figures are wrong. Not the reverse. We don't do that. For goodness sake. I mean, Ghana, sometimes I, the way things are done, I'm, I'm very surprised that people like you should be entertaining and even asking a question like this. I'm the Minister of Agriculture. We have staff all over the 216 constituent uh, uh, district assemblies. Yeah. We have uh, sanction officers, directors of agriculture, and all that. We collect data. 
So, I mean, what you have is data from your officers on the field. No, but, but what, what, where, where else can I get the? I can't get the figures from this office. We have a, we have a system, you know. There's a civil service, and they provide a service. Before you can challenge what we do, you have to be very well prepared. You can don't sit in a cry and say, "Oh, what he's saying is not true." Since I wrote that newspaper article, putting out the assumptions and the methods that we have arrived, have you heard anybody coming in with a, an intellectual uh, discourse to disprove what I'm saying? Isn't it interesting? It's very easy for everybody to say, oh, I don't believe. You don't believe this is a church. This is economics. It's not a church. A church, if you belong to a church, then you're talking about belief. It is not belief. This is a very serious business. How you know? many farmers do they represent? Well, I don't know no, their but numbers, no, but I know. Please, no, no, no. Don't, don't make represent farmers. Listen, don't make these claims like this, that they represent farmers. So anybody who gets up and says, I represent farmers, so this and that, you believe them? Well, it was her dream to become a lawyer, but as she is currently a teacher, having served for 28 years. As Ghana joins the rest of the world to celebrate this year's International Women's Day, we bring to you a story of armless Enyonam Louise Aisi, who has braced all odds to make an impact wherever she finds herself. It's 6 a.m. and Enyonam has already started her usual daily routine. She takes her two biological and one adopted son to school before heading straight to the market to buy food items needed for supper. She teaches children who are on admission at the National Catholic Health Service Orthopedic Training Center at Adrijui, near Insawom. She was reposted from the Adrijui Catholic School, where she had been teaching for 17 years. This is her sixth month with these children, but she's already a source of inspiration to them. She teaches students patience in classes one, two, and three. After giving up on her dream of becoming a lawyer due to certain challenges and factors, Enyonam is worried that the next generation of persons with disability will be more deprived. She laments how persons with disability are denied access to so many public places and the high level of insecurity they encounter. Parents of these children, many a times, they don't see their future to be bright. So they don't make any attempt of taking them to school. But if the government or the society try as much as possible to do little to help all of us, it will go a long way to help those of us who are old and then the young ones that are coming. 
She encourages persons with disability to dare to fulfill their dream. To be a disabled is, I mean, is not easy. But we shouldn't just see the way we are and the way the society is not helping us. We should at least push ahead and by all means, one day they will also make it. Director of the facility, Sister Elizabeth Newman, believes Enyonam is a blessing sent from God. She recounts how accomplished Enyonam has become having watched her grow up. It has been quite interesting watching her grow up and watching her become a young woman and now quite an accomplished woman. Uh, I'm very proud of her. I was very excited when the government uh, sent Enyanam to our school as the headmistress. I think she is performing well and I am not surprised. She has performed well in any particular job that she has been given. This sign is what? What is the meaning of this sign? I said to you, I said to you, Okay, go here. Aha, go here. Where are they? Definitely a woman worth celebration. Um, let's do some other stories. And a, stor a student of uh, Ofori Penin Senior High School was struck and killed by lightning during a rainstorm on Sunday evening at Kukurantumi in the East Akim municipality of the Eastern Region. Now, one other student affected by the lightning is reported to be receiving treatment. We'll be giving you details of this particular story in our subsequent bulletins. Now, to other stories, don't forget that you can get interactive with us on our social media handles, Twitter, as well as Facebook. Over 700 pupils in two schools, Oyoko Presbyterian Primary School and Oyoko Methodist Basic School, have been displaced after their classrooms were affected by rainstorms in a new Drabin municipality Sunday night. School authorities have merged classes as a temporary measure, but cannot guarantee effective lessons. Yvonne Nikwe's report. Sunday night's rainfall lasted for hours in the new Jabin municipality of the Eastern Region. Pupils returned to school on this morning to find their classroom roofs ripped off, with electric wires hanging dangerously loose. At the Oyoko Presbyterian School, five classrooms in the lower primary and junior high schools were affected. Over 500 pupils were displaced. The headmaster of the school, Reverend Adams Ochery, said the only immediate solution is to combine classes as they wait for the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, and the Municipal Assembly's intervention. He expressed concern about the school's junior high school pupils who are having their examinations soon. It is a very big worry for me because, one, uh, I'm preparing the BEC students, that's JHS3, now that the classes are being disorganized. I pray that uh, it must be moved as early as possible so that uh, the students can get a place to study. At the Oyoko Methodist Primary School, four classrooms had their roofs destroyed and textbooks, boxes of chalk and other teaching and learning materials were being salvaged. The headmistress of the school, Anastasia Kwam, called for assistance from the authorities to enable the school return to normal teaching and learning. It's just a big problem now because for now we don't even know whether the afternoon people they are going to come. For now we have two classes in one classroom. The new job in Municipal Chief Executive Comfort Asante said not more personnel have been assessing the devastation and would respond appropriately. The aged Oyoko police station was not spared by the rains. And away from that, let's do some other stories. And the president of the Nigerian Senate, Dr. Abubakar Bukola Saraki, has urged parliament to carry out its oversight role diligently and in a transparent manner in order to win the trust of the people they represent. Now, delivering the keynote address at a symposium to mark 25 years of Ghana's parliamentary democracy, he called for collaboration between the Ghanaian and Nigerian parliaments for the benefit of its people. The legislature 
by reason of its composition, represents the interests of the people and serves as counterbalance to executive power. Parliament is therefore the best defender of our democracy, the best representation of the diversity of our nation, and the fulcrum for harmonizing initiatives that express the will of the people while providing clarity on how best to implement these initiatives. If Africa is to be fully integrated in the global economy, its constituent nations must be governed by rule of law, and we have to commit to making the required adjustment now. The strength of democracy starts with the strength of parliament. It is our responsibility to instill in the public politic the time-honored principles of participation, transparency, and accountability, and to fight corruption, always making space for stakeholders' participation. This is the modern model of modern democracy. Honorable colleagues, you will agree with me that parliaments are a stabilizing force in democracy, especially with regards our oversight responsibility. We must be courageous. We must be able to speak to power, as difficult as it is sometimes. It has its own casualties, but we must be able to do that, because that is our responsibility. We must be able to take our initiatives. We must be able to stand for the right of our people. To do this, we must defend democracy. All right, that's all for the news this morning. I am Solis Rose Gorte. Visit our website, www.3news.com, for more news updates. New Day returns shortly after this. Stay with us. Welcome back here on New Day. Of course, it's Independence Edition of New Day. But all our newspapers seem to be on holiday. They're celebrating independence and they're <laughs> celebrating freedom today. So we too, we're just going to chit-chat about independence 61 years on and what you feel about it before we go, go on to Daily Rant today. But guys, really, yeah, but, 61 but, years down the line, uh, if, I mean, you were a child and you thought of something Ghana should have achieved by now, hmm. what would it have been? And have you seen that thing materialize as of now? 61 years, I think that we have too many members of parliament, mm. and I agree with Professor Michael Kwe, <laughs> 275 of them. Oh, really? Um, the value of work that we expect from parliament, we don't get it. 61 years on, I think that we have mortgaged our country uh, in many different ways. Our gold, our cocoa, our timber, our diamond, our oil now, mm. uh, our rose wood, mm -hmm. our food, Everything. to the point that we even import food. Yeah. 61 years on, we can't talk about the quality of education that people get. Mm -hmm. Today, people go to school and it's just sim simple ed education, right. you know, and I, I don't know. It doesn't translate yes. to the ground. It, does it give them employable skills? Mm -mm. 61 years on, and, you know, we owe so much as a country. We even plan with the donor agencies mm -hmm. in our budget. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We plan for deficit. We plan to owe. Mm -hmm. We don't plan to make profit to want to distribute the profit afterwards. Mm -hmm. 61 years, we have more churches springing up, but evil is all over the country. Mm -hmm. 61 years, um, our national health insurance scheme is in shambles. It doesn't look too good. And the politicians are doing pull and push yeah. with this. So 61 years, Kolebu will still mm -hmm. have pregnant women lie on the floor with their babies. Mm -hmm. 61 years, we will still have uh, cracks at the Independence Square. Yeah. The the issues, I mean, somebody will say, well, we are being pessimistic and we should look at the brighter side. But these are the real issues. Mm. The real issues mm. that today, if I go to Kolibu, if I go to Mamprobi Polyclinic, if I go to Achimota Hospital, if I go to Kanichi Polyclinic, what quality or duty of care will I get? Yeah. And how would that make me patriotic as a Ghanaian? Exactly. I mean, everything, well, the, the push <coughs> factors seem to be more than the pull factors. Mm. In as much as you want to be a citizen and not just a spectator, as our president has encouraged us to do. You know, introspectively, I feel 61 years down the line, we have let ourselves down. Why do I say this? I haven't lived that long to experience all the years, the 61 years Ghana has. But at least in my few years of even existence, I have seen that constant desire to improve mm. upon the little mm. I can do, even for myself as an individual. But I don't see that translating to the broader scheme of things in Ghana. 
I've, yesterday, I sat down carefully to look and revisit the story mm. of our independence mm. and how Ghana has transcended over the years, the many governments that came into power and mm. the desire to want to change something. Mm. But I see it being a repetition or the supposed the desire. Su the supposed desire mm. by getting on there and not being able to mm. execute anything substantial. And I think that's why we keep referring to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Yes, many people have said there were negatives in his you know, governance, but overall, he had that broader picture mm. of really <laughs> that passion to make it not only Ghana, but Africa as a whole. And also, you know, he even talked about the United States right, of Africa. Right. And so he wasn't looking at, of course, in all that, I'm sure in his grand scheme, he was looking at Ghana becoming independent mm. and being free such that we were, you know, self governed and But also he looked at it in the context of us as a whole, okay. because you can't live as a, you know, um, what's it called, um, an island. You need people, you need to depend on people. But he was looking at even at least depending on your st African nations and not beyond aid. And that's where I think right now the conversation should come back. Because if you talk about Ghana beyond aid, in as much as we have the resources to help us, right. there are still neighboring countries we may need to depend mm. on because you've got electricity <laughs> issues, you've got cocoa problems, you've got real issues that don't transcend beyond our borders mm. but will need support. Mm. Because if we don't yeah. look at these things that go around us we will do something but it won't change right. it will be the same thing over and over again and mm. yesterday when i read the stories and i saw the boozias i saw the kuf, i mean so many passionate people but weren't able to do anything and i <laughs> see the same thing coming out in ndc <laughs> mpp uh, 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 cp uh, uh, all the parties is he bright is bright is smiling no is he bright is smiling well i i, I wish i wouldn't be part of this conversation because for me what is lost uh, hmm. It doesn't matter to me. Hmm. But w the difficulty I have is that yeah. I, I don't see any future ahead of us. Right. Yeah. Yes, that, that, that's my difficulty. Hmm. 61 years of mess, fine. It is lost. We've been told right from uh, crash that hmm. you don't cry over spilled milk. milk. Yeah. So hmm. it's lost. My worry is that even the future hmm. is bleak exactly. from what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the very people who are supposed to take us from where we are to that promised mm. land. Don't even know where the path to that promised land right. is. All they do mm. is come, fill up what they have lost, and then when it is time for them, exactly. they go away. You, you know, so we'll you be you where you we know, are. I agree, I agree with Bright yeah. in, on many fronts, because mm. if you look at even, just not go beyond the Fourth Republic, right. okay? Uh, stay within the Fourth Republic, mm. right? From President Rawlings mm. through to President Kufo, President Mills, President Mahama, President Kufuado. Look at all mm. the policies, for mm. example, on education. President Rawlings had the F cube. Yeah. Today, after 25 years, mm. is the F cube fully operational? Mm. No, it's not. Okay. There are now several kids every, out there who are working. Every country, mm. every yeah. government keeps telling yeah. us mm. after President Rawlings that to the education is paramount. What have they done to it? Nothing. Yesterday, Nothing. we had the select committee uh, ranking member yeah. on the select committee for education in parliament. Oh. It, tell, it told us that, look, even the allocation for basic education for this year, they had to fight it for, yeah. for it to be introduced. Okay, let's look at the promises, mm. campaign manifestos mm. on health. Let's look at campaign manifesto on security, mm. on gender. All of them, all of them have something that looks like the same thing. And you see, if you cast your mind back to Kwame Nkrumah's time mm. or to Dr. Buzia's time, mm. you will find out that these are clones from that yeah, place. Seems Agenda that was started by these people mm -hmm. that we couldn't finish. We have just translated all, and we are not serious about implementing them. Yeah. That's we a are worry. not serious yeah, about yeah, implementing them. So yeah. where do we go from here? That today, people in Volta region who, for example, uh, uh, make Kente mm -hmm. cannot even get the yarn to buy. Yeah. We can't, we have, we claim we have a cotton plantation mm. in this country yeah. and we're importing everything, yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're asking okay. yourself, is this a country that has all the resources? And check what, on the stock exchange on mm. the global mm. front, all the things that they trade there come from Africa. Yep. And Ghana <laughs> is part of Africa. Certainly. Gold <laughs> is high on the <laughs> stock exchange. Coffee is high on the stock exchange. Cocoa is high on the stock exchange. Timber is high on the stock exchange. But Diamond is there. <laughs> Manganese is there. All of those things. Yeah. Oil. But those of us who produce it, 
you don't benefit. What do we have they, to show for uh, it? Johnny, and let's even go they, back and talk about tourist sites. Because yesterday, you know, on TV3 during the news, we captured some of these tourist sites that are being broken down. Mm. So again, the vision mm. for these tourist attractions, is it that we don't understand when it comes to tourism? We mm. have lost it altogether. Because under what circumstance, really, it baffles my mind mm. that you no, want no, to I'm a, you and do an expansion no. and actually spoil a whole tourist the site where even the president once slept. Mm. People will want to travel ev from every part of this world to come and see something like that mm. and that's why south africa will make you know headlines with their tourist sites because they will keep these things and exactly. even if they were to move it they'll make sure they are moving it to a good site but ours we shut it down and that's the end of it the problem is right. not that we do not know uh, that these are what will make the country mm. a good place to stay mm. you take a look at our leaders from 92 mm. okay how many of them can say that they've never stepped out of this country <laughs> All of them did. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know Mr. Rawlings before I saw him on June 4th, 79. Mm. Maybe then a poor soldier, he had never stepped out of Ghana before. Maybe if he's crossed the borders, mm. it might be Togo right. or on some uh, <laughs> military <laughs> duty. Because right. he claimed he was very poor. Right. Mm. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping mm. or I'm thinking that he couldn't have afforded um, a plane ticket to, to fly out. Right. Mm. But apart from Mr. Rawlings, every one of them has spent some days outside this country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they know how their health system works right. mm. they know how the transport system works right. they know how the tourism sector works mm. there they know everything they see it they mm. enjoy it mm. some of them have told stories of they being in other countries where they they ask themselves hey you do you people do doom so here mm. okay they themselves told they their themselves own yes. stories yes they and yet they come back and they see doom so every day and all they do is to sit and watch right. okay so they know what is good for the country mm. but it is not their priority mm. but, but, but their priority <laughs> is that i have i am the president yeah. immediately someone becomes a president the vice president the minister mm. the first thing they look at mm. is the immediate environs right. what can i the do? roads around his or her house right. must be asphalted mm -hmm. first thing mm. meanwhile go to some remote area mm. There's not even a road there for the people to, to use. Office. But the first thing is that the road around his house must be asphalted. The, his the office, my, uh, uh, and mm. I, 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 was so, I was so angry when people uh, are made ministers and public officials, and the first thing they start talking about is their office, is this, there is mm. innovation, and, and they, sp they spend mm -hmm. money to do it. It is so shameful. Yeah. So, so, so shameful. So, so mm. I, I, I think last, um, last week or earlier, Yes, last week, sometime mm. last week, I heard the parliamentarians say that their February salaries have not come. And, and I was like, mm -hmm. wow, mm -hmm. are these the same parliamentarians <laughs> who told the people that they are there to serve the people? Yep. The same parliamentarians? Yes. Yes. They, they that they know that people have worked with Ye and nurses have worked Six for months, 13 years, some two years. Uh, 13 <laughs> weeks or uh, 13 months. They know that doctors have not been paid yep. uh, and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Are these the same parliamentarians they who are. say that they care about them? I, 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 I was just, okay, so just one month salary delayed and they are all delayed complaining. Delayed by a few days. Let's not even say one month <laughs> yes. because it was a salary few delayed days. by a few days. And, right. they, and they start complaining. Months. Yes, okay. and they start complaining. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, wow, so <laughs> how did that ordinary <laughs> year <laughs> beneficiary oh, um, live? All the, the six months, the all the eight months. not been paid for yes. 24 yes. months. For 24 months. How did <laughs> they live? How did they survive? Work, paid nine months In the later. meantime, you can't compare the parliamentarian mm -hmm. salary to what the nurse earns. <laughs> so that the nurse is living from hand to mouth and the parliamentarian is complaining because the salary delayed for yeah, four, five hours. days. Mm -hmm. And you're like, and he's, wow. Yeah. These are the people who want to serve us. One thing they, I've told you, one thing they all mm. agree when it comes to parliament is their money, their salary. <laughs> they won't, I mean, they won't miss you, you know, you talk, they won't You talked talk about tourism and mm. whether we are serious about yeah. it. There's a big problem that I've noticed. Mm. See, the Kakum National Park mm -hmm. is under the Forestry Commission. Mm. It is supposed to be <laughs> also under the Ministry of Tourism yep. and the Ghana Tourism Authority. Right. Okay, so when they collect the tolls at Kakum, where does it go? That's where the confusion is. You see? Mm -hmm. Now, the forts and castles are under the Museums and Monuments Board. Mm -hmm. Are they an agency of the Ghana Tourism Authority or are they on their own? When they, they can, collect the they, money they from there, where, the mm -hmm. where do the monies go? Mm -hmm. And so you find that you go to the Cape Coast Castle mm -hmm. every day, Elmina Castle, pay monies there, but it's the walls the cannot same. be painted. <laughs> and you know, when you don't paint the wall, like what is happening to the Crystal Ball Castle now, mm -hmm. when you don't paint the walls, people don't come, the atmosphere and everything, are you, Johnny, it starts are you, deteriorating are you, and breaking are you, up. Are you shocked? 
The, Say again. Are you shocked about? Oh, I'm, I'm not shocked. Sure. Sure. I'm buying the MPs I'm giving the excuse is to attempt to preserve it in its natural state and not touch it. So that's why they're not renovating. So don't worry. It's there's for your some, own good. There's something but coming up that you should watch out for. Yesterday, yeah. the mm -hmm. Independence Square gave us a shocking story here. We'll tell you about it. Senior mm -hmm. Bright will tell you about it. Mm -hmm. But. <laughs> People are gathering there. You mm. should know what the true state of affairs is at the Independence Square, mm. where people will be sitting, standing, where the president to, himself will be standing. You to, will see to it. Mark 61. Yes. But it's Just time for us to rant yes. as well. We're mm. asking the simple question, 61 years after independence, what can Ghana boast of? Let's see as we rant with George Quinnen out there. I love my mother Ghana, but I don't know about you. It's been 61 years after independence, more like an additional year after the retirement age. What can we boast of as a country? Will the late Dr. Kwame Kumar be proud of Ghana? This is Daily Rant. Let's keep talking. Yeah, Ghana wasn't meant for Kwame Nkrumah. Ghana is a nation. Ghana is bigger than Kwame Nkrumah. On my part, I believe uh, we've done or achieved something. Uh, at least the peace we've been enjoying yeah. all this while. We've also had some successive you know, transition of government. You know, at least these are critical things. To some extent, yeah, we've done well. Oh, for me, there are 61 years. Um, if I've achieved something, and sometimes too, we've not achieved anything, in a sense that compared to Malaysia, I think we are far the same time behind. Independence. Yeah, I think we are far behind. And then when you look at Malaysia, you know, they've done exceedingly well in everything, you understand? Employment, you know, you know, everything that a citizen need to make life. Comfortable for, you know, themselves, they have it too. I think that compared to Malaysia, you are far behind. Yeah, we've come a long way. Mm. Yes, we are achieving. Mm. We've not achieved, but we are achieving. We're in progress. Um, I see we, we've achieved a lot. Mm. Because before our national stadia were two, mm. now we could boast of about six mm. national stadiums. Um, now, if you want to apply for passport, you could apply online. If you want to clear goods at the port, you do it online. If you need a driving license, you do it online. Mm. So basically, we, we've achieved. If we've not achieved, I don't think we would have all those developments. Okay, just the one year after independence, it means one year added to retirement age. And you find people taking rubber, duplicating inside, and then throwing it anywhere. If Ghana, if Ghana wants to retire, at least the one year, Ghana will not boast of even attack <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> because recently, the passport office was closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. Fine. If even physical edifice is closed, how much more online? The vice president launched Ghana GP. Yeah, address system. Address system. When you chase, you, you, you can't even find a ghost. You understand? The spirit of armed robbery. You know, you know we, are, we are enjoying our peace, all right. But, you know, there are a lot, there's a lot and a lot have to be done. See, we need to go back to me. I wish Nkuma is alive. Yeah. Because he's, he's Ghana. You understand? Nkuma is Ghana. But he said, someone says, you know, Ghana is bigger than Kwame Nkuma. Yeah, Ghana is bigger than Kwame Nkuma. No, how can Ghana be bigger than Kwame Nkuma? When all the successful, uh, successful presidents that we have, Kwame Nkuma did a lot than all of them. We claim that we are in a modern world, modern Disney world. Disney. See, even our fire service, when a story building is, is uh, let's say, yeah, there's, let's say there's, a, there's a limited feet. Yeah, they have limitations. Yes, I bet you our, our five firefighters cannot boast of equipment to even combat that. this thing. You understand? So, the country, like I said, I don't understand. No. We should start celebrating independence. Members can we do me do? We just say, yes. And you said it. We've come a long way, uh, no doubt. You see, anytime you want to check up on your development, uh, anytime you want to check up on the development of a nation, immediately you begin to compare yourself to others. There is always a shortfall. We can't all be on the same scale, no. 
it is impossible. But Malaysia, but, but we had the same independence. It doesn't matter. It matters. It, there are people that it, should, it should be a yastic. It's like we all took it together. So it should be a yastic. We can just look at them and it's like, oh, we've not done enough. They've done enough. We started school with a, a, a lot of colleagues. Today, most of them have achieved a lot. Like some it's of us. True, yeah. True. So, you know, when you want to do some of these things, you, you are going to force yourself to do certain things which we See. wouldn't you know, add up to your life. Recently. You know, but it's not bad to compare yourself to others. It's not bad. It's not, it's not bad. Mm. It's not bad but it's not the best of yastic in all situations. No, it is not. Either Malaysia, <laughs> Malaysia or Singapore, I don't know the two countries. They make excess of ten billion dollars, and each citizen is entitled to three hundred dollars. You understand? Fine. This is a country that we started with, and they even making. They've made after writing their budget. They had excess like ten million dollars. So why are you also doing to support them? What am I doing? Am I supposed to do something if the leaders are not doing anything? Oh no. How about it? They are not patriotic. No, I don't. My, my, my brother is getting something. Else. Look, look at this thing. Yeah. It is more poor. Yes. Look at it. Sama. I will not human. Oh no, we are all human. Oh, but like it takes time. You see, in everything it takes time. Do you want to tell me that? No. The whites are better than us, or any skin, no, they are uh, no light skin. They can be. Yes, I'm any light skin no. person is better than you. No. Brother. No. So whatever they have achieved, I'm not. I, I'm not asking you to compare us yes. with America. Or, or Britain, uh -huh. or I said Malaysia. At least these are our Yeah, they are. Do you understand? Even South Africa, that we are older than. Okay, can boast of many things that we we. So I think that me sometimes I've. I don't know. See, the independence, we should just forget about. We should scrap it off. Eh? We should scrap everything. Use the money. See, we have. Yesterday I was watching your news. Kids sleeping in uh, in classrooms, yeah, uncompleted yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. classrooms. Actually, you understand? And you are saying you are, you are celebrating. Just go and go and hear the the, the, the money here man for this thing. And we are amazed that we are we are we are we are spending money on unnecessary things. You think it is for that? That's to celebrate the independence because it's like why, why won't we celebrate an independence day? A day we are achieving independence as a nation. We need to achieve like we need to celebrate it. Mm. If my brother is saying this, 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 and that, I'm surprised he's not also calling the positive things or some of the things we've achieved as a nation. We have free education in the system now. Do you know the state of the free education? Oh, no. no is it, whether, whether, whether I know the state every, of it or new, not. Any, every new yes. development is fraught with challenges. Exactly. So let's accept that there's a challenge we will tackle it. Exactly. You know, we have free it. education in the system. These are all developments we, we, we could boast okay. of as a nation. I took home my friend will tell you, Charlie, Moon Tong Ghana, then give my share. I want to live here. Me? Yeah. If they give me my share, I'll go and stay at Kaswa. I'll live Ghana. Best to Ghana. I'll live Ghana and stay Be at Kaswa. Ghana. See, let me tell you something. <laughs> See, this country, uh, this country, honestly, like your brother, like your friend said, we should sell it. Me, my share, I'll go and stay but at who Kaswa. Said, who said Americans don't have problems? Uh, who said Asian, the Asian country don't have problems? There are situations, challenges everywhere. You see? Uh, Infrastructure-wise, I would say yes, we are a bit behind. Yeah. But beyond that, you know, that that hospitality, that unity as a nation, these things are moving us forward. I would have a big challenge when it comes to the political arena. That is where it seems like we are divided as a nation. And I only pray that there is going to come a time where we are going to have, I mean, generational thinkers, like my brother said, leaders who are only thinking about themselves for today. Nobody's thinking about tomorrow. Do you imagine Kwame Nkrumah in his graves nodding and said, "Okay, we are on course. I'm happy. I'm happy yes. about it." No, we are not happy. Kwame Nkrumah, he is crying. <laughs> hey, Kwame Nkrumah, yes. but he said he bought safe. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. Even our this uh, was in the motorway. Just check the road. For many years, you you have some potholes here yeah, and there. Exactly, yeah. But even that, this genera generation they miss concrete and poise. <laughs> you understand? And, and it's causing what? A lot of oh, uh, uh, accidents. See, the man did what? Akosu Moda. Look at this thing. What's the name? Uh, you go to the man. See the way they develop uh, uh, even the town. You understand? The man had good vision, good plans. I don't know. But so you think the central government are not carrying on that innovation? You know? They are not. Look, mm. They are not. This is the flag of Ghana. Yes. Red, gold, green. Yes. Would you die for Ghana? 
For where? <laughs> Are they crazy? <laughs> You know that for your country. I will not die for my country because my country is not dying for me. Uh, my country is not giving me anything to to smile about. Uh, I see. I will look at all around me. You, you sleep in peace. Ah, I sleep you know, in you know, peace. You know, we have the peace. The, the, That's lasting peace. The peace there, there. there is light twenty four seven. The, see, the peace is there. Television. Not because. To the radio. Not because we somebody has food. given us the peace. Oh, mm -hmm. or some military people have put gun on our head to what mm. to remain calm and peaceful it's because we think that this nation even if it's throw bomb and we fight each other where are we going die is relative you know i don't know what you mean by die now you are saying it's relative yeah le yeah you are saying it's, uh, master say I, I, I will not die and be free. I'm, I, Don't bring I, I'm English. not a spectator. Oh, I'm a citizen. Yes. I, I, I love my nation, no, Ghana. I'm a citizen. You guys are criticizing me. I'll what do me? everything to uphold the peace in Ghana. Okay. I'll respect my president. I'll respect the cabinet. Yes. Who is not I'll respect, respect my fellow citizens. No, who is not Listen, this is the only Ghana we have. Okay. We, we thank God so much for 61 years. Uh, we believe you are going forward, no doubt. God bless my whole land, uh, my homeland Ghana, yeah. and make our nation great and strong. Great and strong. You see, it's key for that. Listen, because you know, say you don't be hurt, you won't talk the matter. My brother, I, 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 I've been fasting for Ghana. I've been fasting for Ghana. I've been fasting for Ghana. Chop, leaders. Chop. I am praying someday. What I am seeing, the vision I'm seeing Ghana to achieve. I am praying one day you will achieve it. And this, my brother. Will be shy. United we stand divided before. Let's you know put all hands on deck and build Mother Ghana. Let's hear your thoughts on this. Uh, have you done enough six to one years after independence? Just log on to our social media platforms. On Facebook is news on TV3 and on Twitter is a news TV. So the campaign is still on where Ghana, it's Ghana, no Ghana, and watch Ghana. Follow the hashtag we celebrate GH. Enjoy your holiday. Good morning. Thanks so much for staying there. Now, we very soon will get into some of the stories making headlines. But first, let us take a look at this. It is not the first and may not be the last. Now, the demolition of some heritage sites in Ghana, regardless of their relevance in the country's history. The, uh, the, the Ave Maria Hotel in Tema, which uh, houses the reading room of Britain's Queen Elizabeth, has been earmarked for demolition again. Uh, Community GGMF takes a look at implications of the gradual wiping of Ghana's heritage sites. Okay, I think I'm right. mm -hmm. Embarking on this journey, I expected to see evidence that, indeed, part of Tema is situated at the center of the world as authored by history. My first stop was the Ave Maria Resort, originally called Halko Beach Club, built in the early 1950s by Sir W. Halko, the consultant assigned to the construction of the Tema Harbour. Before the facility was acquired by the Ave Maria Holdings in 2002 and expanded to its current state, the club had only these two rooms which regularly hosted Ghana's first president and for once, hosted Queen Elizabeth II when she visited Ghana. When the Queen was coming in 62, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the late president, asked that uh, they build a pool for the Queen's use and a, a small room for her relaxation during the day. So the club members built this pool and as I said, apart from Kwame Nkrumah, who was using the place, no other um, person was allowed. And the, after the Queen's visit, Kwame Nkrumah was using the pool and you go in there and relax. We are told that um, he will first of all go and swim in the sea, sit on the, uh, the rocks and then come finally to swim here and go and sleep in that small room. Apart from the swimming pool, which has been preserved till date, all other items both dignitaries used during their visit have been replaced with modern facilities.
But this does not in any way erase the significance of this place. Conserving it is not as about preserving the past for the sake, for its sake, or the sake of conservation, but it has significance bearing on the identity of Ghana. That is why we should uh, be thinking about how best we could actually conserve and maintain that site. The Greenwich Meridian Rock which I had read about in my formative year should have been few meters away from the resort but was no more due to the port expansion project. The Ave Maria Hotel here at Tema clearly holds a significant amount of the country's heritage which ought to be protected, if for nothing at all, for our future generations and for tourism purposes. But this hotel may probably not live to see April this year. What we were doing at first was to keep that room as an exhibit. Foreigners and um, Ghanaians who want their honeymoon to be memorable so they go, uh, they come in, they said we want to sleep in Kwame Kumar's room. Right now, <laughs> we've been giving up to 11th of March to close down. So what do we put at that particular sp space to commemorate this ideal that we have, that we are the center of the world? Okay, it's a place that people would visit. It's a place that we can use to teach children generations to come. So what if we destroyed all things in the name of development? We call that development without control. Okay, we are not thinking about our heritage. And it is for that matter that the youth of today keep on asking questions like, so what did we do in the past? Okay, and other uh, writers who are non-African will say, Africa did not have any history. If the Ghana Tourism Authority says it's been working to save the Ave Maria Resort from being demolished. By what I have been told, uh, both from official and non-official sources, the cost of re-engineering the project to accommodate the facility is way beyond what the project can contain. And so it may come out even more expensive if you try and do a re-engineering and take the railway out of it. Yes, for that. But in going down, I've seen projects around the world where maybe you move it another 500 meters away, 400 meters away, you keep the items, as many of the items that you can, and then you will still have the potential. The rock is said to lead to another center of the world tower here at the Presbyterian Church of the Greenwich Meridian at Tema. At the same location, the Meridian Line could be found. The historic Seaview Hotel, in which the Queen of England, Elizabeth II, was during her visit, has also been demolished to pave way for the construction of a church auditorium, part of the old Parliament House in Accra, which hosted Ghana's first parliament, was demolished last year, two years after the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Ghana's Heritage Conservation Trust aimed at forging closer collaboration to strengthen their managerial role in preserving Ghana's historical site and cultural heritage. As it is, most of these sites, attractions, heritage sites and all those things are not regulated by uh, GTA. And so we have, we're working on a new legislative instrument. We've met with the parliamentary group a few months ago. We need the backing of the law so that every site, every attraction will be regulated by GTA. That will also give us the mandate to be able to do proper auditing of these sites. This resort is said to have been recommended to be preserved by the Centre of the World Committee as it is viewed as having great value for Ghana's tourism sector. But will this recommendation be taken serious? Kwabna Edu Jemfi, TV3, Tema. 
All right, so we'll get to more of that to mark Ghana's 61st independence anniversary. But uh, let's jump into our conversation this morning. The Today newspaper is the only one I have. Uh, 3news.com has uh, some stories. We'll quickly take a look at that. Uh, one thing is the, uh, the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission's announcement yesterday about uh, reduction in tariffs. Um, the paper put it as uh, in, in line with Section 17.2 of the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission Act 1997, Act 538. Um, according to the PRC, uh, the whole process was taken after extensive stakeholder consultation, a detailed technical analysis of utility tariff proposals, and consideration of inputs and concerns of consumers. A statement uh, signed by Mrs. Mami Dufiofori and copied to the newspaper yesterday noted the review takes effect from uh, March 15 and is expected to be reviewed again in 2019. Uh, the paper says that the process took into consideration the impending private sector participation concession within the ECG and then the review process resulted in reductions in key utility costs. So uh, these are uh, what we are to look for. Um, between 10 and 30 percent, uh, that's uh, the charges, non-residential, um, uh, 30 percent for special low tariffs, uh, residential customers 17.4 and then uh, non-residential uh, 25. Uh, minus are uh, getting some 10% reduction. Those are the figures uh, there in the newspaper. Let's start our conversation with uh, this this morning. Richard, let me begin with you. You are a member of the NPP's communication team. Richard Asante Yeboa is here. I also have uh, the member of parliament for the Tamale North uh, constituency, a member of the NDC. Gentlemen, good morning. And good happy morning. Uh, Independence Day. Mm -hmm. Same to you. We'll, Same to you, we'll talk about Independence Day right after talking about electricity. Now, Rich, let me begin uh, the morning with you. Um, the concerns of many, uh, one of which is that we should wait for the PRC to publish the full detail of what went into this on the background of the fact that these utility providers were asking for some 200 percent increment. So if there's a reduction, then we need to be properly told about what went into it. What do you make of the decision by PRC to, to review tariffs downwards? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brighton. I think good morning to your amazing uh, viewers. I think uh, this is a welcoming news to the entire uh, population, most especially those within the uh, business uh, 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 sector mm. or, and those even households. Uh, I, I think one thing that we ought to appreciate is that it has been the desire of this government to look at ways of uh, reducing cost of production, as, uh, expanding and opening up our economy, creating jobs for the ordinary people uh, with the uh, private sector, spearheading that sort of uh, uh, idea. Yeah. And government has taken both that decision in previous budgets to indicate to the whole population that this is the angle that we want to go by slashing the good number of taxes and some of them scrapping it entirely from the 2017 budget. It gives an indication to every business person that, you know what, this is how this government want to uh, approach things. Remember in the run-up to the election, the MPP, particularly our then uh, uh, presidential candidate, Nana Dankwa Kufa, the vice presidential candidate, gave an indication to Ghanaians that the, the, it does appear that Ghanaians are paying more for electricity than even they pay as rent on a monthly basis. So there ought to be something drastic done about this whole phenomenon mm -hmm. to sort of, one, reduce the frustration, the pain, and also the hardship that has been visited on the ordinary persons. This president, the president and the vice and the MPP government has given that clear indication. And this is the strongest of it that they could do in terms of the proposals that they forwarded to the PRC. Remember that the PRC uh, law that regulates that is fi uh, at, uh, 538 right. gives everything to the PRC in terms of uh, a, a, a setting up the, the tariffs and the figures. But individuals, corporations, and government can make input in terms of proposals. What government has done over the period is that government has taken in measures to one, reduce factors that culminate into the, uh, in, in, in the production of power. So in, in terms of one, uh, renegotiating or cancelling out 
contract that seek to cost Ghana more. Because, for instance, it came to uh, uh, the fall in the, in the run up to the election, even during the President Mohammed's era, that we're, it, was, it was costing us more to produce power in this country than what we're importing from La Côte d'Ivoire. So it does appear that it was cheaper importing from La Côte d'Ivoire than producing power here. It meant that whatever agreement that we're signing with other investors, we're not really negotiating well and we're not getting value for money. That was one of them. In terms of the, 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 the cost of natural gas and other things, it does appear that it was more expensive for us to produce that in Ghana than to even bring it from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So from all these indices and all the uh, numerous uh, power purchases agreement that we signed, this government felt that we need to renegotiate, look at it, and see where we can cut and, and, and save some, make some savings for the ordinary persons. Government has equally been able to sort of in increase the mix. Previously, our efforts were largely on only uh, 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 Tema, where we need to buy fuel to power all these uh, uh, equipment. And w the moment the prices on the world market continue to show up, it affects the calculations. But now we are looking at other, uh, a wider range of areas where we are literally uh, getting other uh, power from, from solar, we are getting some from the uh, increased numbers from, the, uh, from hydro, and other uh, wind and other areas that we are equally getting some uh, support from. So from all these indications, Everything stands to reason that PRC will look at that, the government proposal, mm. look at the effort government has put in place in terms of trying to reduce all these factors to, to help uh, uh, the, the various power producers to be able to come out and, and at every given time, every power producer will even ask for 1,000%, 100%, 200% at every given situation. But when the facts are presented before them and they look at what government has done mm. in trying to, because remember that when the MPP assumed of it, we said to the whole world that we are not interested in any power purchase agreement that seeks to suggest that we are going to buy power more than 10 cents per kilowatt hour. That was the strongest indication we sent. But when we came, we realized there had been agreement that we were paying 19 cents, we are paying 20, 20 cents, 22, 21 cents. But MPP government decided to look at all these ones and say those that we're not really interested in to f try and create that space that then liberates the system for us to be able to provide some level of relief. And I so, think so that for you, the renegotiation of these agreements is a key in... in it's it's one of the in reasons, one of the reasons, and also trying to make sure that we cut down on the excesses in the system. Well, for instance... But, but you know one it, variable is the... Is a, is a the exchange, exchange rate. Which, no. which, which, which I mean, it's not relatively stable. It, it hasn't got into where we want it. And I know that in the, in the, in the course of time, mm. it will come to a point where Ghanaians will see the, 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 the effort being put in in trying to stabilize the city. It has been relatively stable. And we think that there's more room for improvement. But for a government to be able to look at this and say, you know what, the ordinary Ghanaians, beyond all the tax uh, cuts that I gave you in 2017, where we reduced a couple of tax, including our sisters and brothers who are even paying uh, uh, some levies to the assemblies, being asked not to pay all these things, and other reductions in various sectors and import duties, being, uh, uh, people get, being granted access to bringing raw materials and machinery without paying duties on that and all these things. Government has equally gone ahead to, one, reduce taxes for non-residential customers by hoping 30 percent that is quite significant to any industry any uh, any any entity mm. any business and i think that tv3 would appreciate this because you're going to make a windfall if government is giving you that sort of relief that, that we are looking at residential communities mm. i mean those the power we spend on watching tv and a few things in our house we are equally getting 17.5 percent that's quite enormous but, we are but, seeing the mines I mean, equally gaining I mean, getting the, about about the last uh, time that ab tax, about 10 percent that's in 25 percent uh, for what has special not become the famous aboso kind tax was was removed i mean the situation has not changed the 17.5 percent on um, domestic uh, airfares. I mean, the situation in fact has even worsened. I mean, the price, the fares at that time, uh, as we're compared now, is even higher. So, how can I, I, we I think, be sure? I think I think I understand your frustration and your sure call. Cool. I think, I think a lot of a lot of things have happened. Uh, this is only uh, a cosmetic thing, and that in 2019 we're likely to see 
review upwards. I think let's wait and see what 2019 will bring to us. But as it stands now, this is the good news government is bringing to the people. But I think let me, let me dwell on your, your, your call on government effort in taking 17.5, uh, 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 I think 17.5 VATs that we're paying from the uh, FS mm. uh, and uh, 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 domestic FS. I think government took that decision because government wanted to strengthen that industry and try to create more space for other uh, in, uh, influx into the market too. And I mean, unfortunately, within that scope of time, we lost one of the uh, operators within the sector. But uh, I, I, I think about two weeks ago, I was particularly part of a, a, a meeting where the Honorable Minister of Aviation, Madame Cecilia uh, uh, Dapa, mm. and the deputy met the officials of African World for they are currently in operation, and brought those issues before them and gave them time to come to the, to, to the, to the ministry and give them the, the, the effort that had been made to, one, help because make Ghanaian feel the impact of that re re removal of those VATs on the, on the FS, and also some of the difficulties that the airline had uh, encountered within that short period. So government is busily working around the clock, okay. and that particular ministry, especially the, uh, Madame Cecilia uh, Dapa and her, and her deputy, Honorable Kobe, are busily working around the clock with all the agencies under them, trying to make sure that this issue that you spoke about, because mm -hmm. just about, and I'm sure the African world officials who confirmed to that, I, I was uh, particularly lucky to be part of that meeting, that's it to uh, make sure that we gain from the, the benevolence and also the, the hard work and also the effort of the government to try to reduce the hardship, the frustration, and, and, and the pain of Ghanaians in terms of how much we spend on various uh, 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 activities that we embark on on a daily basis. And I'm thinking that this major, major reduction, I think, is the, is the highest and the best news that could be given to Ghanaians on this day as we, uh, we, we celebrate our independence. Uh, independence. And I'm thinking that no government right. has been able to gather that sort of courage okay. to be able to do this and, and the kind of impact and the joy coming from uh, 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 the association of uh, 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 Ghana Industries, coming from the Workers Association, coming from the private uh, citizens across the country, the place that the ordinary people, the Kaya people, the torture drivers, the taxi drivers, and every time they can help within even the forgotten part of this country is largely going to benefit from these huge reliefs that government is bringing to them. Right. And I'm quite excited on, mm. on, on this particular news. Richard, I'm grateful. It's a member of the NPP's communication team. Uh, and also, Yini, the, Richard says that it is the kind of news that, as we mark 61 years, we should be uh, glad about because we'll see the effect. Well, once again, let me say good morning. And let me say good morning to our viewers and a happy uh, independence anniversary to all. Um, I think that we have to be mindful of the fact that we are building a 61 year old nation. And in doing so, we need to be very uh, attentive to uh, facts. It is based on those facts that uh, we can take informed decisions, especially when we are in charge. So, for example, my brother talks about, you know, cancellation of contracts and negotiation of contr renegotiation of contracts that have led to the situation that uh, we have a reduction That's in utility tariffs. I'm putting it on record that there is no renegotiated contract as we speak. And there's no cancellation of a no, contract. No contract, as we, no contract no has been renegotiated. No contract has been renegotiated successfully by this government. And no contract Several has been cancelled. Can he give us a few don't worry, when don't he gets you want to finish. No Richard, I come to you to tell us which ones you know. No you contract has been successfully renegotiated in the power sector. And no contract has been cancelled. In the past, we heard the minister or the ministry talk about cancellation of some contracts. It turned out to be a memorandum of understandings. And a memorandum of understanding is not binding. So if the utility companies entered into memorandum of understanding with some power you know, producing companies to purchase power from them, and they were supposed to meet certain standards before that memorandum of understanding became binding, on any of the parties, and you decided to get out of the memorandum of understanding, it, is, it does not amount to a contract. It impacts nothing, because in the first place, the memorandum of understanding was not binding on anybody. So let us be very, very factual and, and stop the propaganda. Yes, indeed, this is good news. I mean, who doesn't want to pay for less? Mm. But you see, I've also indicated that we are building 
a 61-year-old nation. And we are very fast to compare ourselves with other developed nations. And sometimes the question we ask ourselves, especially when we compare ourselves to Malaysia and others, is why are they where they are and why are we where we are? Now, what have they been doing differently? What did their you know, generations before now do differently? And how are we also in our part of this country conducting ourselves? You see, for every ease, there is a cost. Right. For every ease that you seek, there's a cost to it. And that is what we have to be mindful about. And that is why I am not comfortable with the whole process so far. I would have been more comfortable if the process was not, for example, short-circuited by the President, His Excellency. If he had not made those announcements, that's what exactly. you're Exactly. You see, as the leader of the nation and the President, and because of the patronage system that we run, if a President did what he did, he sends the message to, you know, people working for him to, in some cases, you know, uh, suppress their professional background, their professional ethics, and do what will please the king. Now, the president, we all know there are laws in this country regulating the power sector and how tariffs should be adjusted. The president ignored the process and jumped to announce these reductions. Now, after his oh, announcement... Yeah, proposals or okay, he, 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 he made proposals. Okay. Yeah, no, he no, made proposals no, to no, the PRC no, no. as far he back made, as 2017. He made an announcement of reduction. Proposals. And the announcement, the reductions were specific. And that is what is reflected. So we proposed. Uh, uh, were, were they not proposals by the president? Were they proposals? Yes. We listened to the president. No, proposals. He assured... He assured consumers he was not making the proposal to PRC. He, he was speaking, went above that. He was speaking okay, to consumers. He was speaking to consumers and was telling consumers what is coming their way. So that was, I mean, a proposal will not of that kind will not go to consumers. But, but if if he says, for instance, that uh, we have proposed to PRC A B C D, even though I don't even want I don't even want to believe at that point. I mean, okay, I'm making a point, listen. but that is not my focus. Right. You see, I'm saying that the president short-circuited the process. And by so doing, he stampeded these professional institutions, I feel, into the situation that we find ourselves. I hope that is not the case, but I feel that is the case. Because you see, when the utility providers went before the PURC, mm. they requested over 100% increase in their tariffs, backing it with data relating to their cost of production, relating to their plans to, you know, uh, 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 increase generation and to perform better. Those were the reasons or the grounds that they used to request for over 100% increase. But you see, these utility providers are professionals. Many of them, maybe apart from a few managers and, and chief executive officers, mm. are not appointed politically. They are people who are guided by the, what has to be done per their training. So they were not listening to the president. Now at the PURC, the body that is supposed to regulate this process, we know who appoints them. But yes, there are stakeholder meetings. But we, the stakeholder meetings, you know, the, the people who are the stakeholders are dominated by the consumers. And so when you have the president speaking the consumer's interest, you have a process that will be guided by the president's appointees. And you have the people in that process dominated by the consumers. You are likely to have a situation where the interest of the producer and for that matter the interest of the growth of the sector will be you know uh, subsumed or consumed by these other interests oh. so you see for me as a consumer this is good news but for me who is worried about the development of this country and the need for our power 
you know, uh, 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 producers to be up to the tax, to continue to grow and expand. Remember, we had a target of 5,000 megawatts, you know, uh, and also the target of producing to the extent that we can even export. I will want to see the details because they have not right. gazetted yet. Mm. And then see how the negotiation led to the request of over 100% from these, these utility providers to continue to provide us effective power. You know, being sidelined for us to even get the kind of reductions we are getting. Because you see, like I said, for every ease there's a cost. I will hit a situation where I pay less this year, pay less next year, and 10 years to come, my children will not have power. I will See, hate that situation. You, 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 are you suggesting that these uh, downward review perhaps will not be the interest of the providers? I hope, I hope that is not the situation. So I am, I am cautiously excited about this reduction. Because you see, we, we, it has, I feel that if the, you know, interest or the concerns of the utility providers are not adequately addressed, but this reduction is just to give the current generation the comfort that they need without a mind on the future generation and the future you know, uh, 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 ability of the companies to continue to provide power, we are going to get into the era that we got to not too long ago. Remember when we had Dumso? Mm. One of the challenges we had was production. And the, 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 the concern at the time was that governments upon governments had not increased production. And that we only had our reliable source being the Akosombo Dam, which was put up by President uh, you know, Nkurma. But yes, but, after but, that. But the current, so the, the current government, uh, when in opposition, said that our problem then wasn't production. They, they said that you simply didn't have the money to buy uh, the, the fuel to power the plants. That's why we're suffering. Well, I challenged them then to shut down the Ameri plant. Let them shut it down. If that's the case, if our, if our problem was not generation, but money. Let them shut down their boss, the, 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 the Ameri plant. I dare them. If they do it, we'll go back to Jumso. And I dare them. And anybody who is in the, in the industry knows that if Ameri plant shuts down today, we'll go back to Jumso. So you see, that's why I'm saying that we are building a nation and there's a need for us to be candid with, 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 with the, the people that, you know, entrust the, the building of this nation, uh, you know, into our hands. I don't think the propaganda helps anybody. Yes, maybe it will help your party for a while. Mm. But trust me, when, when, when the chicken begins to come home to roost, we will all be the bearers of that bad situation, which, which has ties previous governments for not investing enough in the power sector. And that was why we had a generation gap which resulted in the power crisis that we have. So today, if we, if we have some security in terms of generation, mm. and we think that the best way to handle that sector is to constrict you know, expansion works and to limit investments into that area so that companies and you and I can pay less, only for five years down the line, 10 years down the line, for population to increase again and demand to increase because demand will always go up. I see. And we are unable to cater for that situation. Then this, this short, you know, if you like... Uh, comfort? Uh, comfort. It's <laughs> not see. worth it. Let me put this question to uh, Richard. Richard, is it, is it an attempt by the PIC not to contradict the president? I, I think uh, it does appear that my brother is not happy about this good news. Oh, not, he's, not he, he said he's, he's happy. He's not, he's he's not, he says, said he's happy. He's only being cautious. He says, he says, he says one thing and he tries to shoot it down. You see the propaganda they do? That's so, so so that the next headline the you wait, <laughs> The next headline you are likely to hear from their communicator is that NDC are unhappy over reduction in utility tariffs. Nice. It doesn't help you. My brother is not happy. And I was expecting you to be very happy and even applaud the government. 
that his constituents are going to stop trooping to his house on a daily basis or uh, to, to ask for assistance. Because when there's that sort of assistance to the general public, in terms of, for instance, free edu education, these electricity tariffs, and other uh, 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 policies government has implemented, that's it to take away some of the frustrations of the ordinary people. As a member of parliament, I was expecting him to applaud the government without necessarily reading other meanings and making certain in, in, insinuations that seems to suggest that the PRS will succumb to the, the, their wishes and caprices. You don't, you don't think president. so? That's not so. What the president did was to announce to Ghanaians what measures the government has put in place to seek to reduce or to, to cause a, a reduction in the uh, uh, tariffs that we pay. And government has already made a formal proposal and presented it before a PRC as far back as 2017 November, giving an indication that we've done A, B, C, D. And when you do these things, it will reduce the cost of production. It will reduce a lot of things. So this, based on our calculation, if the people cannot enjoy at all, they should be enjoying something within the range of 40 percent thereabout. And PRC has looked into this and other proposals from the, and, uh, the, from the various power producers and even uh, 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 workers' associations and all that, and looked at it and realized that, you know what, based on what government has done, it is feasible for the companies to operate, the various investors to operate. Because when you look, read the PRC uh, 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 release, it gives you an indication to the whole population that they've taken consideration, uh, 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 taken into consideration the, 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 the investment the, the investment uh, 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 paradigms of various investors, they looked at the concerns of uh, the ordinary people, the, uh, the uh, energy uh, uh, operators, and all these things have been brought in on board before they took this decision. And the decision that they've taken, there's not going to be anybody who's going to be hurt. As for you mean the power, of, the power see, producers right. when, at won't moment, in any way be hurt? No, That's what no, you're they, saying. They've done that. They know all this. They but, but, you know they right. ask at for moment, some when you're asked to make a proposal increase. for your salary. Mm. To present the proposal, right? I, I, I can be rest assured that you asked for thousand percent, mm. but it is up to management to consider other factors and see whether we can make and meet those demands. It doesn't mean that indeed, if the, whatever you are taking right now, you are dying. Mm. Maybe it's sustaining you, but you will want more. Anybody given the opportunity to go into the negotiating table will go and make you proposals. It doesn't necessarily mean that when their proposals are reduced or you are given a middle ground, you cannot operate. Okay. So let's understand and appreciate from that angle. Uh, 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 quickly, before say, I go to Anambu Sweeney, uh, okay. some have also suggested, for instance, that instead of government uh, trying to uh, benefit from this sector, government could have simply removed the VAT on um, the, the tariffs, the 17.5, instead of uh, trying to push this to the uh, independent uh, producers. So that once government pulls off the 70.5 VAT, it will bring down uh, the tariffs instead of uh, now uh, the producers losing all this amount of money because of what has been given to them. I don't think the producers are losing any money. The the when, producers well, are I not mean, what, losing what, money. And what government has done is that, for instance, if ECG just buys the power mm -hmm. as it's been sent to them and redistribute it and take their money and pay back those who are giving the power to them, Let's assume that ECG was previously buying it at uh, uh, 19 cents per kilowatt hour. And now there's an arrangement that could allow them to buy 10 cents per kilowatt hour. It stands to reason for ECG to look at it and beat down the price. Because now they are getting it cheaper. That is what it's been looking I see. to. The, the, the secondly, one thing we need to appreciate is that government has control and largely has investment in most of these uh, 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 power generation uh, areas. And most of them are PPP, public, pub, uh, public Partnership Arrangement. So government has interest in them. I'm not sure government is seeking to collapse those sectors, whilst government is overwhelmingly looking at creating and building up industries and, and creating jobs for a good number of Ghanaians. So the desire of the government is to target the business community expand the economy, reduce the frustration of the ordinary people, and also the hardship that were visited on them by the previous administration. And that's okay. why this government is taking measures to, to make sure that all these things are done. For okay. instance, I'm sure Quickly, people wrap up, have let issues me get with the, uh, a, a, a policy like free education. But we know that parents are at the moment having a relief 
in excess of 3,000 cities every semester or every term because of this government's effort in, one, taking care of the entire school fees, the feeding, the books, the uniform, and other things that comes with it. Government is gradually strengthening the health insurance area to also make sure that at least within our health status are world upgraded. Government looking at other sectors, infrastructure. There are a good number of policies and projects that government is uh, 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 currently looking at and also doing. So let's appreciate what government is doing now. Let's applaud the government. Government knows that you want ECG and other uh, 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 power producers and other uh, operators within the sector to be able to to be strengthened. Whatever funds, whatever assistance that they need, government will provide it for them. We want to get to a point where we can start uh, exporting our power to other African countries. That's okay. what government is looking at. Okay, Richard, I'm grateful. And I was in please wrap up on this one for me. You know, I just want to reiterate the point that indeed as we speak, there has been no renegotiated uh, contract, you know, uh, in the power sector. There has been no uh, successfully renegotiated contract for which reason we will have this reduction. In fact, the only energy uh, contract that we have signed has rather been described by the experts as a very bad one, the one between ExxonMobil and Ghana. It has been described by the experts as if the, a very bad one compared to you know previous ones, and even which is flies in the face of, of, of flies in the face of uh, uh, you know some of the laws. If you call uh, uh, Steve 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 Matthew uh, Steve, is that the name Mantiel. Mantiel, as uh, as I an NDC expert, I will call him. So. He has said so. He has said so. He has, if you I call him an NDC so. expect, that's your mind. Seen, uh, he you he has said so. Okay, uh, Mr. Chris, for here, I think I think that is raise some issues with the exit mobility too, but I don't. You, know, you're going you, you are a newscaster. I'm sure you have heard uh, him yeah, say so. So, so. <laughs> his mind is made up. In fact, I mean, the funny thing is that you know, I read it somewhere. Uh, that Amari has not been in operation. Please, Richard. And uh, he says that if yeah. Amari is shut down within the last one month, Amari has not been in operation. That's not true. Yes, and, but <laughs> still, there'll be a call. And he's given our man of. All right. I don't I'll give you the list of all the really negotiated contracts that have been cancelled. Okay, you don't have them. I read it somewhere. And he has just demonstrated it that when your mind is made up, facts confuse you. So uh, he hasn't said so. Whether he has said it or not, he's, yeah, his mind is made up. Anyway, but, 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 but then analysis. again, when I talked about Amery, he has come to say that, oh, if they shut, look, there is a nine-page recommendation or advice from the Attorney General to the Energy Ministry on Amery. I advise my friend to read it. Mm. In that advice, the Attorney General admits that if Amery is shut down, we will go back to power crisis. And I'm telling is you that as you speak, it's, it's, a trouble it's, gas is please, not in please, And Amery is Don't down do for one month. Don't we are not this. in power crisis. Don't do this. Uh, Don't do okay, this. you, uh, Richard, you Don't allow him. This. Once you said that uh, um, Amery is not uh, in operation, fine. He said that uh, when you That's what I'm down, telling so him. There, there's, there's that document, uh, 4th November, mm -hmm. is a nine-page document, 4th November 2017, by the Attorney General. He should apprise himself with it, and he will get, uh, uh, he will understand me further if he will not allow uh, his mind being made up to confuse him with the facts again. Then again, the issue that I want to wrap up with on this uh, tariff reduction mm -hmm. is the fact that there is something curious about the announcement. One, the last part of the announcement, and uh, I hope I can quickly pull it up. I think it's the last paragraph. Uh, it talks about the, uh, what do you call it, utility, the PURC. Okay, fantastic. It's here. It says that the commission will also continue to strictly implement its automatic adjustment formula in order to address changes in operational conditions. I know what that means. You know, because we know that the request by these utility providers, you know, was based on their operational conditions. Now you announce this reduction, and then you cap it by saying that you will continue to strictly implement your atomic, your automatic, your automatic adjustment, adjustment formula. You know, atomic, uh, yeah, uh, automatic adjustment formula in order to address charges, I mean changes, sorry, in operational conditions. Now, that is curious. That's the first curious thing. What, what does it mean? Does it mean that as we go, you know, in the year based on 
you know, operational conditions of these utility companies, mm. we are likely to see some automatic adjustment, you know, being done. Yeah. Curious. Uh, curious. The second curious thing is that the announcement we are told of 30% mm. is on 2015 tariffs, not 2016 tariffs, right. not 2017 tariffs, 2015 tariffs. What were the 2015 tariffs? If you calculate 30% on the 2015 tariffs, what are you going to get based on the 2017 tariffs? And you recall that in 2015, the exchange rate, just the exchange rate, was $1 to about 3.24. Today, the exchange rate is about 4.4. So when you talk of 30% on 2015 tariffs, so let's, that's why I said I am cautiously but excited. I'm into, I'm Apart okay. from these curious things I have mentioned, no I'm also worried <laughs> about even I mean, the, 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 the expansion and the need to invest yeah, yeah. and take care of future generations as far as power supply is concerned. But okay. all in all, we are all in this country. My brother is not ready. Uh, 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 we we'll, we'll talk about independence <laughs> right now. But first, there's there's nothing nothing thousands are expected at the Independence Square what for Ghana's uh, 61st anniversary celebration. Now, uh, it will be a colorful ceremony featuring the high and mighty as well as the low and bubbly clad in the rich Ghanaian county and the likes. But what is the real state of the affairs of the Black Star Square? Johnny Hughes was there and has this report. The Black Star Square, also known as the Independence Square, is bordered to the east by the Christianburg Castle, the west by the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. The Accra Sports Stadium sits to its north, while the Gulf of Guinea borders it to the south. The Independence Square was commissioned by Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, in 1961, in honor of the visit of Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain. The square is an important center of attraction and a point of convergence for Ghana's Independence Day and May Day parades, as well as some major national public gatherings and national festivals like church services, concerts, and monthly Women Aglow prayer sessions. A 30,000-seater capacity comprising eight stands, the Black Star Square can boast of the Independence Arch, which houses the Presidential Days, the Black Star Monument, the statue of the proverbial heroic Ghanaian soldier, and the Perpetual Flame Stand. It is a real sight to behold from afar and a major tourist attraction. But what is the inside story and how safe is it? And can it continue serving the purpose for which it was constructed? On the eve of the 61st independence anniversary of Ghana, the Community Connect team visited the Black Star Square to observe preparations for the celebrations. We didn't struggle to identify various degrees of visible cracks in the stands, under the stands, in the gutters, and even under the walkways. The sitting area at the 57-year-old edifice has more cracks than its age, yet it continues to play host to thousands of Ghanaians and foreigners alike, including children of school-going age. The cracks are on every side, presenting a risky picture. The iron rods, supposed to be concealed in the concrete, are visible. Not even the presidential section reserved for the most important man in Ghana is free from cracks and what seems like a prolonged neglect. Surprisingly, the president is often not up there alone. Other presidents and esteemed visitors of our beloved nation are also hosted there, including high-ranking officials of state and other very important personalities. This door had almost fallen off since one of the hinges supposed to hold it in place was not available as at the 5th of March. The gutters have their own share of the cracks. The slabs and the waste pipes tell a sorry story that must be heard by all in sundry and fixed immediately. The terrazzo steps that leads to the perpetual flame stand that plays a significant role during the independence festivities cannot hold on anymore, so they have given up and are falling apart. They are shaky. This access bridge tells its own story. A story of gradual decay 
concealed under the guise of a wooden bridge. And where are the seats? Who took them? Do they know that it cost us an arm and a leg to install them? Who has the duty of care to protect our investments? Will Dr. Nkrumah be happy with how we have managed this priceless gift which he bequeathed unto us? Is this what the Black Star stands for? And oh, is this how well we can manage our own affairs after 61 years of independence from the colonial masters? Who will fix this mess? This is the story of the Independence Square. The liberation soldier, the perpetual flame, and the beautiful emblem of independence. When so, hundreds of Ghanaians, and indeed thousands of Ghanaians, gather here at the Black Star Square to celebrate the efforts of our forebears, will it be in freedom and justice, or will it be in fear because of the cracks? Will they have their hearts in their mouths? What are duty bearers doing about this? Does this reflect our attitude towards maintenance for Community Connect? This is Johnny Hughes from the Black Star Square in Accra. All right, uh, Johnny Hughes there from the Independence Square. Very soon we'll be uh, taking you to the square where activities lined up for the day will begin. Let's come back to the studio. Uh, uh, the Today newspaper says 61 years, uh, Ghanaians still unhappy with level of development. Um, Ghanaians are right in saying that they're unhappy with the level of development? Absolutely. I think that uh, mm -hmm. no Ghanaian should be proud of how far we have come. Uh, even though uh, we have done remarkably well in some spheres of life. For example, our democracy is the envy of many other nations. Uh, our stability and peace, that is why some of us are worried that uh, security has become a challenge. Because our greatest asset in this country that has kept us going over the years is peace, is the security that businesses and investors, you know, uh, 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 highlight. Mm. is one of the attractions to this country, and so we must jealously guard that. So in some areas, if you also talk about our human uh, 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 resource development, to some extent, I mean, across the globe, uh, there is hardly an institution or a country that you will go to that you will not find Ghanaian experts, you know, excelling. So in terms of our human resource development, uh, we haven't done badly. But in terms of managing, uh, you know, our resources and putting our resources to good use, I think we still uh, have, uh, you know, uh, a long way to go. And this may be as a result of some of the interruptions that we had. For example, the, 19, the 1966 needless coup that truncated the progress that Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah started. And I have always said that when you look back, you know, there, there's hardly a sector in this country today that does not survive on Nkrumah's legacy. There's hardly a sector. We just finished talking about energy. Mm. And one of our key investments in energy was by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. We talk about roads. And the celebrated motorway comes up. You know, at the time that he did it, it was one of two, I think, in the world. You talk about even education. And you know, just last week, my school, Ganasco, celebrated the uh, speech and prize giving. Uh, 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 the, I mean, these are the, 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 the legacies of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Talk about the University of Ghana Medical School and others. And... That's why I'm saying there's hardly a sector, mm. talk about even atomic energy, you know, there's hardly a sector that he didn't touch, even, even to the extent that you cannot discuss, uh, what do you call it, our music and culture, the investment in drama, without talking about Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. So this needless interruption of progress in 1966 and subsequent interruptions mm. may be blamed for the situation that we, we, we find ourselves. But you see, I agree with what a brother of mine wrote on Facebook, I think two days ago about our independence, that it has simply been reduced to a birthday celebration mm. where the question is asked of how old you are and not how much you have achieved. So that, that is the, the sad reality of our country. It's the independence celebration has been reduced to a birthday celebration. 
and then we sing hooray hooray we march and that's how old are you 61 years and because <laughs> at no birthday celebration is the celebrant asked how i mean how well have you done in life what have you achieved it's just how old are you mm. and i think that is what exactly uh, our right. independence celebration okay. has been reduced to and it is sad let me go to richard richard uh, come in uh, we are so unhappy I think uh, we should be proud of ourselves as a country uh, from the moment we achieved nationhood and the sort of strives and successes that we've chopped over the period. Like my brother indicated, there have been a lot of uh, difficulties along the journey. I mean, there have been moments where uh, we've truncated our democracy and have gotten ourselves involved in a, a, a military junto as where, I mean, we're literally taken uh, back for years. And, and in the final analysis, uh, 1992, we were able to reaffirm ourselves that we want to focus and become, an, uh, become a democratic state. And I think over the period, we've shown to the world that this is a country that is ready to sort of uh, uh, achieve more success. I'm, I'm happy that he li highlighted some of the quotes. I was expecting him to equally mention, uh, although he said there are other successes, but it does appear that his, uh, his uh, energy and effort were literally placed on only the 66 group. I was looking at the 31st December 1982, uh, I mean, talking about the coming back of uh, uh, the uh, PNDC that literally overthrew Dr. Liman's government. That was equally one of the, uh, 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 the, 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 the Liman, uh, uh, Dr. Nkrumah's uh, 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 because. And then, then, then the PNDC uh, 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 and the NDC have their umbrella court tied together because we are looking at the same architects. Just a few individuals from other uh, areas came in. So it tells you that over the period as a country, we've, we've gone into a good number of things. I think we've made a lot of progress in certain areas. Democracy, we say we've done a, good, a, a lot of good to ourselves. I mean, it hasn't been easy when you look at the African terrain, how many countries have been able to sort of successfully transfer power from one uh, democratically elected uh, government to the other. I mean, it hasn't been many. We, we find ourselves to be one of them. In terms of peace and tranquility and security, I just, this country, no matter the numerous challenges confronting the modern nations, this country has been able to sort of end the security operative in this country over the years, regardless of the government in power. They've indicated to the world that we are ready to protect, our, to protect ourselves and also fight to, to, to protect the, the, the territorial integrity of this country. But brother, I tell you, when you go look at other countries, the sort of mayhem that is visited on them on a daily basis by the lives of terrorists and organizers and all these things, and looking at where, how far God has brought us, where we do have some few issues here and there. Mm. I mean, he says recent challenges of robbery and all that. The point is that there are issues that will require the military or the police to deal with forcefully. We want them to make sure that we live in a situation where there wouldn't be such issues coming up. But I can tell you, and he knows it for a fact, that even during their regime, there were a few issues here and there. I mean, we're in this country when Honorable J.B. Dankwa, a member of parliament, was killed in his house by, by uh, unknown, uh, also known uh, individuals, whether I'm Roberts or whoever they is. My own good friend, fellow Sufa Once that, a, a that deputy why, minister, he was bugged on two occasions <laughs> as a deputy Are minister. I'm so trying to let you okay. understand that there have been issues in terms of Are we discussing last time around now? when I was doing <laughs> opportunities. Okay. I mentioned a good number of Let's issues, issues that are we've heard a top So I'm yeah. going to Let's say that <laughs> as we celebrate our independence <laughs> as a country, I think that we could do more. There's room, more room yeah. for improvement. <laughs> okay. We can sort of reassert ourselves. And also, that is why I like the president's message uh, and, and the effort and energy by the president, his excellency, Nanado Dan Kwekufuado, in terms of building Ghana and also calling on, on his peers across the African continent to join this, that Africa without aid. Let's believe that we can generate the resources uh, within ourselves okay. Okay. so that we cannot go around with cap in arms and, and begging for, uh, All right. uh, uh, for, for assistance. Richard, I'm grateful. And let's continue to, to, to be grateful. I want to play and with you. Right. And Richard, to happy with the well, that I want to, to play with you, but to just uh, wish a very, very very wonderful person, a okay. happy birthday. Okay. She uh, is an angel. She mm. has impacted many, many, many lives mm. and uh, by far one of the best, in fact, if not the best first lady this okay. country has ever had, complimented her husband so, so beautifully with, I mean, as first lady uh, then. Uh, Madam Lordina Mahama. Oh, today is her birthday. birthday. Happy oh, birthday. Okay. Oh, happy birthday. Right. I, I didn't know uh, that she was the best first lady today. <laughs> <laughs>
But I don't know about my happy birthday. I know she, I know she did that. But I thought and that Nana Prabhu literally um, sacrificed her life to form the NDC. I see these very those calculates. I don't speak for the NDC. I speak for myself. And I'm saying she's the best. Well, grateful. Gentlemen, for your time, one of you need is a member of parliament for your family, not constituency, a member of the NDC. We have an NDC secretary. He speaks for the NDC. <laughs> Let's now get to the independence prayer. Uh, Solid Rose Court is there. Uh, she's been monitoring uh, the lineup of activities there and she's just uh, joining us. Sixty-one years ago, Ghana became free to rule its affairs. On the 6th of March every year, we celebrate this feat. Now, I'm coming to you live from the Black Star Square here in Accra, where we're about to look and witness the amazing sights of what Ghana has to offer every single Independence Day. Annually, we have the Independence Day Parade, where we have the security services, as well as the school children show us exactly what they have got. And once again, I'm from the Black Star Square. Now, behind me, you'll probably see some traditional leaders, and they're all trickling in one by one. The Garmanche is yet to arrive. We still have a few more dignitaries um, yet to arrive. Um, the um, Attorney General, so far, um, Gloria Akufu, sorry, has already arrived. She arrived a few minutes ago. Um, Ghana Beyond Eight, that is the theme for this year's celebrations. The school children have arrived. You're already in the stand waiting to line up and go get onto the platform. We also have lined up uh, the vehicles that will be parading, the security vehicles. We have the armored vehicles from the military. We have the armored vehicles from the police service. We also have the vehicles from the fire service. And uh, um, attendance so far, I'm not so um, encouraging, if I must say. The stands are not as full as you would expect on a, such a day. But uh, you never know. We are, um, it's early days yet, and uh, we're expecting more people. Um, more secondary schools to my right over there in the stands. Uh, they're not so full. There are a few Jama chants here and there. The, the days is also ready. Of course, uh, the special guest for this occasion is uh, the president of uh, Nigeria, his Excellency um, Mahmoudou Buhari, and that's who we expect. We're expecting more dignitaries and more important dignitaries for this particular event. As I've already mentioned, uh, some traditional leaders will also be making their way here, and they're trickling in one by one. There are some party heads, and uh, there are Dr. Henry Latte. We have from the GCPP flag bearer. We also have Ivo Green Street, uh, the flag bearer for the CPP here. Um, the media men, uh, some of them are still, you know, setting up. There's still a lot of setting up going on up and down. We're still having some dignitaries trickling in. And uh, we'll be bringing you more coverage as and when we get more. It was supposed to start technically at 8 a.m. But uh, that is the situation currently here. We have some cultural troops. have, all, um, They've also made themselves ready for the occasion. The military police is also on standby, poised and ready for action for anything that might um, happen today to make sure that uh, this place and everyone here is safe and order is upheld. So that's pretty much it from the Black Star Square here in Accra. Of course, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nanado Dankwa Ekufu Ado, will also make his appearance to give his speech as well. as and when more dignitaries come in. All right, and uh, we will be getting back to the Independence Square in Accra, uh, where hundreds are this morning uh, gathering there to mark Ghana's 61st Independence Anniversary. Uh, Solis Rose Corte will stay there with the team and will be taking us through the course of the day. But early on, uh, Johnny Hughes was there and uh, took a look around the place that is hosting hundreds this morning as part of the Independence Anniversary. The Black Star Square, also known as the Independence Square, 
is bordered to the east by the Christianburg Castle, the west by the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. The Accra Sports Stadium sits to its north, while the Gulf of Guinea borders it to the south. The Independence Square was commissioned by Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, in 1961, in honor of the visit of Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain. The square is an important center of attraction and a point of convergence for Ghana's Independence Day and May Day parades, as well as some major national public gatherings and national festivals like church services, concerts, and monthly Women Aglow prayer sessions. A 30,000-seater capacity comprising eight stands, the Black Star Square can boast of the Independence Arch, which houses the presidential days, the Black Star Monument, the statue of the proverbial heroic Ghanaian soldier, and the Perpetual Flame Stand. It is a real sight to behold from afar and a major tourist attraction. But what is the inside story and how safe is it? and can it continue serving the purpose for which it was constructed? On the eve of the 61st independence anniversary of Ghana, the Community Connect team visited the Black Star Square to observe preparations for the celebrations. We didn't struggle to identify various degrees of visible cracks in the stands, under the stands, in the gutters, and even under the walkways. The sitting area at the 57-year-old edifice has more cracks than its age, yet it continues to play host to thousands of Ghanaians and foreigners alike, including children of school-going age. The cracks are on every side, presenting a risky picture. The iron rods, supposed to be concealed in the concrete, are visible. Not even the presidential section reserved for the most important man in Ghana is free from cracks and what seems like a prolonged neglect. Surprisingly, the president is often not up there alone. Other presidents and esteemed visitors of our beloved nation are also hosted there, including high-ranking officials of state and other very important personalities. This door had almost fallen off since one of the hinges supposed to hold it in place was not available as at the 5th of March. The gutters have their own share of the cracks. The slabs and the waste pipes tell a sorry story that must be heard by all in sundry and fixed immediately. The terrazzo steps that leads to the perpetual flame stand that plays a significant role during the independence festivities cannot hold on anymore, so they have given up and are falling apart. They are shaky. This access bridge tells its own story. A story of gradual decay concealed under the guise of a wooden bridge. And where are the seats? Who took them? Do they know that it cost us an arm and a leg to install them? Who has the duty of care to protect our investments? Will Dr. Nkrumah be happy with how we have managed this priceless gift which he bequeathed unto us? Is this what the Black Star stands for? And oh, is this how well we can manage our own affairs after 61 years of independence from the colonial masters? Who will fix this mess? This is the story of the Independence Square. The liberation soldier, the perpetual flame, and the beautiful emblem of independence. When so, hundreds of Ghanaians, and indeed thousands of Ghanaians, gather here at the Black Star Square to celebrate the efforts of our forebears, will it be in freedom and justice, or will it be in fear because of the cracks? Will they have their hearts in their mouths? What are duty bearers doing about this? Does this reflect our attitude towards maintenance? For Community Connect, this is Johnny Hughes from the Black Star Square in Accra. All right, Johnny Hughes there from the uh, Independence Square. And Kwabila Dijenfi was also in Tema. And one of the relics that Ghana could be remembered for is also suffering some neglect. Uh, he went there and has this report. <laughs> Embarking on this journey, I expected to see evidence that, indeed, part of Tema is situated at the center of the world, as authored by history. My first stop was the Ave Maria Resort, originally called Halcro Beach Club, built in the early 1950s by Sir W. Halcro, the consultant assigned to the construction of the Tema Harbour. 
Before the facility was acquired by the Avi Maria Holdings in 2002 and expanded to its current state, the club had only these two rooms which regularly hosted Ghana's first president and for once hosted Queen Elizabeth II when she visited Ghana. When the Queen was coming in 62, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the late president, asked that uh, they build a pool for the Queen's use and a, a small room for her relaxation during the day. So the club members built this pool and as I said, apart from Kwame Nkrumah, who was using the place, no other um, person was allowed. And the, after the Queen's visit, Kwame Nkrumah was using the pool and you go in there and relax. We are told that um, he will first of all go and swim in the sea, sit on the, uh, the rocks and then come finally to swim here and go and sleep in that small room. Apart from the swimming pool, which has been preserved till date, all other items both dignitaries used during their visit have been replaced with modern facilities. But this does not in any way erase the significance of this place. Conserving it is not as about preserving the past for the sake, for its sake, or the sake of conservation, but it has significance bearing on the identity of Ghana. That is why we should uh, be thinking about how best we could actually conserve and maintain that site. The Greenwich Meridian Rock, which I had read about in my formative year, should have been a few meters away from the resort, but was no more due to the port expansion project. The Ave Maria Hotel here at Tema clearly holds a significant amount of the country's heritage which ought to be protected, if for nothing at all, for our future generations and for tourism purposes. But this hotel may probably not live to see April this year. What we were doing at first was to keep that room as an exhibit. Foreigners and um, Ghanaians who want their honeymoon to be memorable so they go, uh, they come in, they said we want to sleep in Kwame Kumar's room. Right now, <laughs> we've been given up to 11th of March to close down. So what do we put at that particular sp space to commemorate this idea that we have, that we are the center of the world? Okay, it's a place that people would visit. It's a place that we can use to teach children generations to come. So what if we destroyed all things in the name of development? We call that development without control. Okay, we are not thinking about our heritage. And it is for that matter that the youth of today keep on asking questions like, so what did we do in the past? Okay, and other uh, writers who are non-African will say, Africa did not have any history. The Ghana Tourism Authority says it's been working to save the Ave Maria Resort from being demolished. By what I have been told, uh, both from official and non-official sources, the cost of re-engineering the project to accommodate the facility is way beyond what the project can contain. And so it may come out even more expensive if you try and do a re-engineering and take the railway out of it. Yes, for that. But in going down, I've seen projects around the world where maybe you move it another 500 meters away, 400 meters away, you keep the items, as many of the items that you can, and then you will still have the potential. The rock is said to lead to another center of the world tower here at the Presbyterian Church of the Greenwich Meridian at Tema. At the same location, the Meridian Line could be found.
The historic Seaview Hotel, in which the Queen of England, Elizabeth II, was during her visit, has also been demolished to pave way for the construction of a church auditorium, part of the old Parliament House in Accra, which hosted Ghana's first Parliament, was demolished last year, two years after the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Ghana's Heritage Conservation Trust, aimed at forging closer collaboration to strengthen their managerial role in preserving Ghana's historical site and cultural heritage. As it is, most of these sites, attractions, heritage sites and all those things are not regulated by uh, GTA. And so we have, we're working on a new legislative instrument. We've met with the parliamentary group a few months ago. We need the backing of the law so that every site, every attraction will be regulated by GTA. That will also give us the mandate to be able to do proper auditing of these sites. This result is said to have been recommended to be preserved by the Centre of the World Committee as it is viewed as having great value for Ghana's tourism sector. But will this recommendation be taken serious? Kwabna Edu JV, TV3, Tema. Right, and Ghana is 61 years, and a lot of you are there also uh, celebrating your birthdays today. And uh, Charity Ajam of uh, Premium Law Consult, uh, this is from Soa. He says he wishes you God's favor and good health. May you live up to be a hundred. You're blessed. That's what he says. And this is also from uh, Juan here at TV3 to Hannah Lawe. It is also your birthday. Happy birthday from Juan. And of course, uh, Sarah Wusu, you're watching us from Namo on the Ghana Burkina Faso border. Uh, happy Independence Day to you. And Mercy, you're also watching us from uh, Palahe in Wa East. Happy Independence and mercy to all of you. Stay with us right here because uh, when we return from the break, we'll be taking you to the Independence Square, hundreds there, guarded ready to be part of the parade this morning. This is New Day. We'll return in a few seconds. Right, in 61 years as a country, uh, that's how far we have come. This morning, the parade will be at the Independence Square, but we are taking you on a journey around the country. We're taking you to the Independence Square already. Uh, we also took you to one of the uh, relics at Tema. Now, let's go to the Bonafo region, where Ghana can boast of wildlife sanctuaries like the Bwabin Fema Monkey Sanctuary, the Wechao Hippo Sanctuary, and the Kakum National Park. Ghana is really blessed with ecotourism sites. However, there appears to be other interesting ecotourism sites you probably may not have visited or heard of. As part of TV3's Ghana Month celebration, Kwabnedu Jenfi takes us on a tour of the only waterfall in the greater Accra region, the Chenku Waterfalls. And that's at Dodua here in Accra. <music> Ghana has become a leader in ecotourism and is doing an amazing job at maintaining a great link between tourists, local communities and ecotourism activists. The Kakum National Wildlife Park, the Mole National Park and the Bwabin Fiema Monkey Sanctuary are typical examples of tourist resorts and wildlife sanctuaries within populated communities. But it appears there are others yet to receive the same popularity following their discovery and inherent potential to improve on the country's tourism industry. Deep inside Dodoa Forest is the Chinku Waterfalls. This one sacred surrounding is named after the Chinku God, whose shrine is believed to be at Obosomase. Chinku Falls, eh... As I said, no, my great grandfather dear, if I know that me the Kwaku, Otto Efri Busuansi Busuansi form Busuansi form, that was in 1905. 
My great grandfather bought the site from the people of Obosumase in 1905 for farming. In the 1990s, we realized the place has a good tourism potential, so we started organizing holiday programs there. At least, I was told in a week that the site receives about 100 visitors, while thousands of people and tourists visit on public holidays and during the annual Nganyem festival celebrated by the people of Dodua. Like all other revelers, I also did not get any tour guide to brief me. This man claims to be the caretaker of this place. <laughs> I have been staying here for the past three years farming. Locals pay two cities while foreigners pay five cities to gain access to the place. It was clear individuals had taken charge of the site and were cashing in on a disorganization in revenue mobilization since the place is currently not under the management of the Shai Osudoku District Assembly or the Ghana Tourism Authority. Say 500 Ghana. Roughly, about 500 Ghana cities is made a week. This is a typical example of what we call Sea Ghana, but little is known about the Chenku Fall due to the lack of proper maintenance and poor road network. But is there any plan at all for packaging and selling this place to the world? Every natural resource found in Ghana clearly belongs to the state. The Ghana Tourism Authority plans to develop sites with tourism potential to be fitting attractions like the Boti Fall in the eastern region since the Chinku Fall is the only waterfall in Accra and can save people from long distance travel. What we are concerned about is, are the people going there safe? If something happens, will they have insurance? Is there, if there's a fire outbreak, are there exit areas? When they go there, are they being told the right thing? So, for example, we are working with Tour Guides Association on re-registering all tour guides in the country. This has the potential to put money into the local economy since the allodial owners are already making millions of cities from the site. TV3, Kwabna Edu Jev. Well, that was a beautiful one there. Chenku Falls certainly is in Greater Accra. So if you live around, you certainly can look for where it's located and try and go and wash your feet in that beautiful water. But of course, we're celebrating 61 years of independence. You're asking yourself, what has Ghana done for you? But you as a Ghanaian also, what do you think? Oh, well, See, this morning. is not a peace and song. And happy, it's happy a love song. Independence Day of the Month. Peace of March. See, this is not a peace song. It's a love song. Peace of Ghana Day of the Month. If you have children who are just stubborn, you just ignore them. You can't simply ignore them. No, if you're I'm passionate not. about them, you want to change them and see something happen. Yes, but in one way to change them people. is to ignore them. When they see really? that you're no more minding them, mm. they will come back to their sense and say, Charlie, we've done something mm. wrong. That's why they won't matter. Really it works. It works. Actually, it works. Because actually, it when works. you ignore them, then they're like, okay, mm. nobody's saying anything. So let's keep going. <laughs> oh, Charlie. If you, they ignore you and tell you the morning KK is not coming, you, 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 you learn see first. Yourself, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but tell me guys, I mean, 61 years. <laughs>
See, this is not a peace song. song. This is a love song. Peace and Ghana getting married. Peace and love song. Peace and love song. And the fact that you are alive to see another day celebrated means that God has given you another day. And of course, we're happy for ourselves and for Ghana as a whole. I pray that today will bring the blessings of God upon our lives and that we will keep shining as Ghana. Mm. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. It's Ghana 61. And uh, yes. I'm sure Dr. Kwame Kuma would have mixed feelings at this point. Mm. Yeah. About what? Um, yes, about a lot of things. Yeah, about, if you have um, children who are just stubborn, but you just ignore them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, can't, you can't simply oh, ignore no, yeah, them. You ignore but, no, if you're I'm passionate not. about them, you want to change them and see something happen. Yes, but one way, way to change them people. is to ignore them. When they see really? that you're no more minding them, mm. They will come back to their sense and say, Charlie, we've done something wrong. That's why the whole matter is angry. Really it works. <laughs> it's Actually, it works. Because actually, it works. when you ignore them, then mm. they're like, okay, nobody's saying anything. So let's keep going. <laughs> oh, Charlie, if you, they ignore you and Charlie, the morning kinky is not coming. You, yeah. you, you, you learn first. Yeah. But, but, but tell me, guys, I mean, 61 years we've been marching yeah. in the independence. What's the essence? Uh, in we're our still present day. Like, we can write a thesis on that. that no, answer. I want to know. I admit, maybe I'm ignorant. You are not ignorant. You're, you're just being out. I want to know. Do you know those. You out there watching us from home, um, do you know why we still match with John, school children out there? Johnny, the, the point sun? the point is that we should refine. Do you, we should refine. We well, should. How do you mean? We should um, find another way of uh, marking mm. the day instead of getting our kids to match. In the past, it was it was fun to to go out there and match um, because at that time. Uh, in fact, freedom meant marching and, and letting the, the society, the world see that there is that freedom. In fact, it was not easy to get black uh, kids to be out there on the street doing all those things. Mm. So it was a symbol of what we now enjoy, mm. okay? But today, I, I don't know it's about that. It's symbolic. not being easy because I remember when I was younger, it was you were waiting for Sith March. You were well, yes. waiting for your it. Your yes. black yes. shoes. Yes. yes. You are, for the holiday. Are, yeah. I don't know what that was about. No, for us, it was about, you, you know, when okay. you're, you're, you're well, in primary I school, you don't really get. get oh, okay. Mm. You don't really get the opportunity to. That's a GSS. Yeah. So everybody sees you and they're waving. He said, Alva, of course, if you're born in Ghana, bred in Ghana, you speak Ghanaian, you wear Ghanaian, you eat Ghanaian. Certainly, that those are the attributes of a Ghanaian. We're happy to celebrate with you. But happy birthday to Inshiraba Efua Kwesin of the Ghana Navy. Today is your birthday. And of course, to Brenda here, Brenda Dugan. She's my sister. Happy, happy birthday to you. And um, there, Koko. We all love you here from TV3 and Media General in total.